Last year, I discovered something that has transformed my life for the better in every single way, and it is called z e t o c a s t i n There are already tons of videos about z e t o c a s t i n including my own. However, I decided to make an update version of this video because I have learned and understood so much more about this concept this year, and I really believe it is one of the most powerful tools for personal development. So in this video, you're gonna get simple yet comprehensive understanding of z e t o c a s t i n and how to leverage it for yourself. We're gonna cover what z e t o c a s t i n is, how the original z e t o c a s t i n works. Why it works really well, and everything you need to know to get started. If you are new here, my name is Darian, and in this channel, we talk about personal knowledge management and self-development. If you are interested in these topics, please consider subscribe. So, what is z e t o c a s t i n z e t o c a s t i n is a method for personal knowledge management. It is designed to help you effectively learn and develop ideas by focusing on writing and thinking critically. It is invented by Niklas Luhmann, a German scholar who has published more than 60 books and 600 articles during his lifetime, and even more after he died. With this much productivity, you would thought that he worked really hard or had so much willpower, but actually, he famously said, "I only do what is easy. If I falter for a moment, I put the matter aside and do something else." In other words. Not only he was super productive, produced high-quality work, but he also had a pretty good time doing so as well. Now you might wonder how z e t o c a s t i n works. I would like to break this down into three parts: the components, which are different kinds of notes that Lumen took; second is the organization, how Lumen organized his notes; and lastly, the process around the system, how Lumen worked with his z e t o c a s t i n z e t o c a s t i n means wooden box of cards. So the system basically consists of index cards stored in wooden boxes. There are four types of notes in the z e t o c a s t i n system: liturgical notes, permanent notes, hub notes, and fleeting notes. First are the liturgical notes. Just like most of us, Lumen took notes about what he read, but instead of taking notes on the margin of a page or in a separate notebook, he took brief notes on an index card. These notes are simply his reaction to the material he read or anything he didn't want to forget. In addition to this note, on the other side of the card, he put down bibliographical information as references. The second type of note is a permanent note, which is the most important component of a z e t o c a s t i n Unlike liturgical notes, which are about the reading material, permanent notes are the ideas and insights distilled from reviewing liturgical notes. There are a couple of core features of a permanent note. First, each note has a specific, unique ID, which can be referred to by other notes. Second, while these notes are very sparse and condensed, they are written with great care and in Lumen's own words. The last key feature is that they are extensively linked to other notes in the slip box. To illustrate these key features, I would like to refer to an excerpt from a book, "How to Take a Smart Note" by Songke Aren. Lumen usually wrote his notes with an eye towards the already existing notes in the slip box, and while these notes on the literature were brief, he wrote them with great care, in full sentences, with explicit references to the literature from which he drew his material. Literature notes and permanent notes are the core components of z e t o c a s t i n system, but there are also two more kinds of notes. Hub notes are z e t o s that don't contain any notes, but instead has a list of topics or keywords that link to a couple of permanent notes. It is important to note that hub notes don't list all the permanent notes related to a topic or keyword, but just a couple of them to act as an entry point into the z e t o c a s t i n The last kind of notes is a fleeting note. Fleeting notes are notes that record anything that popped into Lumen's mind during the day and are meant to be transferred to other kinds of notes later on. These notes are meant to be fleeting, as the name suggests, and thrown away pretty quickly. Now you know all kinds of notes. Let's take a look at how Lumen organized them. There are two cartons or slip boxes. One is for storing literature notes. This is for referencing. The other one is the main slip box that stores permanent notes. This is where Lumen develops insights and ideas. Now let's take a closer look at how Lumen organizes his notes in the main slip box. Even though Lumen has hub notes which contain topics and keywords, he did not use this as a way to organize his notes. These are just meant to be the entry points into his z e t o c a s t i n 
The way Lumen organizes his note instead is by sorting and linking the notes in very intentional and meaningful ways. Lumen put related notes physically close together in a slip box. For example, when he created a new permanent note, he would put this right behind the note that this note is most related to and add an ID to this new note. By continuously doing this, he created different lines of thinking in his slip box. And if a new note fit into the middle of an existing line of thinking, he would then add alternating numbers and letters to infinitely branch out his thinking. In addition to sorting notes, each permanent note also links to other notes in different locations in the Zettelkasten to traverse from one line of thinking to the other one. What you've learned so far is the system of Zettelkasten itself, but actually the real power doesn't come from the system, but from the activities around it. So we will take a look at Lumen's daily routine to understand how he worked with his Zettelkasten. His process can be summarized simply as read, write, review, relate, and create. As a scholar, Lumen normally began his day by reading. Lumen read a lot and also widely. There are more than 16,000 publications that were referred to in his Zettelkasten. During the day, he would write down Lichten notes to capture things he didn't want to forget and wrote the notes with an eye towards existing lines of thinking in his Zettelkasten. At the end of each day, he would review these notes and write permanent notes which are the distillation of his literature notes and store them in appropriate locations. In addition to this routine, Lumen also regularly review notes to either answer questions he had or understand more about what he learned. From this process, he may get new ideas and create a new zero or need to read more and then go into the loop of writing literature notes and then permanent notes. By continuously doing this every day, he accumulated a wealth of knowledge and wisdom in many different areas. Now that we understand what Zettelkasten is and how it works, I would like to explain to you a bit why this is one of the most genius inventions that could help you learn and develop ideas very effectively. First is the power of standardized formats. Unlike the traditional note-taking where you take notes in different forms and different formats, Zettelkasten streamlines everything around note-taking so that we can use that time to what really matters, which is to think clearly about something. Second, Zettelkasten helps you think better by focusing on writing. Writing is one of the best feedback mechanisms. When you write a permanent note, it has to be concise and be able to stand on its own over time. So this is one of the best way to test yourself whether you understand something or not. This property of Zettelkasten is very similar to Feynman technique. You can check out more details in the description. Third, Zettelkasten is very similar to how your brain works. Your brain learns something by relating the new information to the existing information that you already know. And that's the core property of Zettelkasten. And lastly, Zettelkasten helps you process information effectively. I learned about this concept from Dr. Sang in this YouTube video. He talks about how to effectively encode the information into your memory. And he said there are two ways. One is to process the information at a high cognitive level. And second is to relate that information to the bigger picture and to other information that you have already known. And Zettelkasten helps you do both constantly. And that could be why it works really, really well. Okay, now that you know how awesome Zettelkasten is, let's take some steps to get started. First, you have to decide whether you want to build a physical or digital Zettelkasten. If you want to go on a classic route, all you need is pen, index cards, and slip boxes. But if you want to go digital, you have to choose an app, and I have made this video just for you. Second, you need to fill in your Zettelkasten with something, and there are three approaches. One is to summarize the books and articles that you've read. Second is to transfer all the information from your existing notes app, whether it's Evernote, Bear, Notion, whatever. You just have to transform existing notes into Zettelkasten formats. And last but not least is to come up with the favorite problems. The favorite problems are the things that you are working on or the things that you are interested in at the moment. And you would have some motivation to read more about those topics, to make some literature notes and add more content to your Zettelkasten. And finally, you have to embed Zettelkasten process into your own daily routine. You have to schedule some time to make notes and review notes to make sure that it becomes a habit. 
And that's it for today, guys. I would really encourage you to use the links down below in the description to learn more about Zetocastin and start implementing as soon as you can. It is one of the most life-changing things to me personally. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.